thank you for a great event and uh, really really enjoyed um watching the watching the talks earlier and um, and of course touching on some of the uh, some of the challenges that the industry faces and and of course with challenges there are always opportunities and uh, this will um, be the one of the big industries in the in the 21st century i have no doubt um it is really looking to transform our food system our material system and uh, and really bringing all the benefits of 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 course uh, nutrition um transparency in supply chain and then of course while doing better for our planet better better to our planet so um so this is something that um, it's an industry that i'm very passionate about and super excited about so i'm here to talk about what the uh, what the future of uh, of leather looks like um so there's always the question of um there's always the question of uh, you know of what can new technologies be applied to and um, what industries will they transform in the future and uh, and uh, we've been working uh, for now it's almost five years on um, transforming the supply chain of leather with cellular agriculture so i'm going to take a step back a little bit and of course i mean uh, I'm, I'm i'm preaching to the choir here and uh, and 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 you guys will you know have an understanding of what this industry is but uh, but Let's jump into it here. Um, what is cellular agriculture? It's uh, producing agricultural products from cell cultures. Um, and um, when that is, um, you know, it's mainly been talked about in the, in the food space. So that is, of course, whether that's seafood, whether that's meat, um, and then um, using you know, more an ingredients-based approach, which is uh, creating um, creating kind of milk products like Perfect Days and uh, and Clara Foods with with egg whites, uh, where they where they kind of um, was more of an ingredient product rather than kind of the final product itself. So um, this process when i first heard about it was uh, from 2011 when uh, when a company called modern meadow started up uh, with uh, with the aim of growing uh, growing meat and uh, and again leather so when you look at the food space um, there is the alternatives and then there's the replacement so um, when uh, when you think about it within that framework, it really kind of helps us to understand the the history of the industry. So when we start in the alternatives, and moving then over to the replacements, we start with a veggie burger, uh, which is of course I mean nothing new. Uh, bean burgers and other kind of types of veggie burgers have been existing in the market um, for quite a while. Then it's the more kind of a, the hybrid approach, um, Impossible Burger mainly based from made from plants but then there's a there's a there's a heme that is uh, made through fermentation methods um so again kind of touches on cellular agriculture but then when we kind of look at where this will be going into the true replacement uh, for example mosa meats memphis meats and 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 other companies uh, that are looking to create the true replacements that's where we believe the true transformation of the industry will happen and true customer adoption and of course singapore being the first country now in the world to have uh, to have adopted um to have adopted this uh, new way of uh, of this new food system when you transform that into the uh, into the material space um you have in the alternatives you have pina tax for example that is creating kind of pineapple leathers um you have um you have microworks who are creating mycelium based leathers then you have the kind of um, the, the the more of the hybrid model. Um, so again, um, it's not a lot of stuff out on Modern Meadows uh, new approach, um, but uh, kind of as I understand it, they're creating kind of an engineered uh, material equivalent of um, of kind of using inspired inspired by uh, inspired by leather. And then um, when you get over to the replacements, where we categorize ourselves, um, that's when you kind of when you create the same product um, just using different methods and that's where we you know, can slot ourselves into an existing supply chain so the question is why leather now leather has been an integral um, material for thousands of years uh, for example this is um, this is a shoe um, that dates back 5500 years uh, found in a cave in armenia um, so this shoe is actually older than stonehenge it's older than the pyramids um, and it really shows the kind of the durability and uh, and of course you know, 
leather as a material has been used for thousands and thousands of years. It's as well used across so many different product categories. So again, I mean, basketballs are made with it. You have traditional shoes, very snatchy shoes there. We found a picture of, um, you have um, interiors and then you have um, cars as well, the interior of cars. So again, it's, it's a material that is used across multiple, multiple product categories. And, uh, and again, the industries that are around this are, are absolutely huge. Um, if we weren't all kind of wearing our pajamas on a daily basis now, um, we, you know, on, a, on an average, um, a person is wearing three to four pieces of leather. Um, now, of course, I mean, we're doing Zoom calls, so I don't know how many people still wear pants, but um, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, probably 50% of people attending this. Um, but anyway, so, so leather is a material that is used uh, in, in multiple products. Um, in 2017, it was, it was a $414 billion industry. That's just leather goods we're talking about. Uh, it's projected to be a $629 billion industry in 2025. Um, so again, the material itself, it's versatile. It's, uh, it's, there's a visceral um, aspect to it when you touch it. Um, it's durable um, and, and, it's, and it's beautiful as well. So what is leather? The leather, as you all know, it comes from, cow uh, comes from, comes from cows. Um, it's easy to forget that it's skin. So the skin is processed through trimming, um, tanning, and then finishing. And throughout the process, many of the layers and the components are removed. Um, so again, you have to they, they shave off a uh, big part of the thickness. They, uh, they have to remove hair, keratins, um, and then of course, excess flesh and fat. Um, and that is done during the tanning process. And so a lot of these chemically infused byproducts are dumped into, dumped into landfills. So the leather sourcing, again, it's in the dark ages. It's often spoken as a byproduct of the leather industry, of the meat industry, but it's uh, more of a co-product because it's a valuable product in and if of itself. So big part is runoff and water pollution that happens during industrial animal agriculture, um, as you're all aware. So again, deforestation, uh, displacement of indigenous people. There was a big scandal in Europe where um, high-end car companies had been sourcing leather from um, that turned out it was from Paraguay uh, where indigenous people were um, were displaced displaced off their lands um, and cutting off uh, rainforest etc so um, so again the the supply chain of leather is very opaque greenhouse gas emissions are a huge issue and then of course uh, well rather unethical um, animal treatment now as well, kind of when you touch on the, the supply chain, leather comes from, I mean, it might, Italian leathers are not made from Italian cows. So you have uh, farms in Brazil and Paraguay and the US. Um, those hides are then transported usually to either Ethiopia, uh, Cambodia and other, and other countries where it's turned into what is called a crust. And then that those crusts are sent to Europe or other countries for, for tanning and finishing and then made into products. So even before the product is made, um, a hide can have traveled across the world a couple of times. So of course, there's a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions that, that, um, that uh, get, released, get released during that uh, process. So where did the idea come from? Um, I'm a sci-fi fan. So in 2007, um, I was... Uh, uh, we were talking to companies in uh, both the leather space and the fur space. And, uh, well, we didn't end up working with them, but uh, I, I come from a fashion background. So, um, so I, I come from the product side. I understand kind of what the market wants, what the market needs, um, and then the kind of intricacies and beauties and versatility of leather. So um, I had been watching Blade Runner for probably the 10th, 20th time. And of course, they're growing snakes and they're growing owls in, 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 the, in the movie. And uh, I thought, why wouldn't you be able to grow? what you need from an animal to, to create those products. So um, I then met, went on to make a very technical drawing of the first bioreactor that, that could do this. Um, we, uh, this was of course um, a rather crude um, technical drawing of what 
would then later become a platform. But then kind of when I started actually, so this was 2007, I became interested in um, joining the field in 2015. Um, and in the intervening years, I kind of kept an eye on it and, and saw that there was there were things happening, but it hadn't really become an industry of, of, of yet. So in 2015, I, uh, I saw that the market was transforming and, uh, and, and, and this might become an industry one day. So I wanted to see how do you grow skin in the lab and, uh, and, and that kind of set my path um, down to where we are today. So in 2016, when we, when we founded Vitra Labs, um, this was the first proof of concept. So we had grown these tiny little pieces of, uh, of uh, cowhide using cow cells. Uh, we had tanned them, we had finished them, um, but of course this was, um, this was at the very early stages. Now what we've done since, um, I'm sure that there would be a good uh, how it started and how it's going meme as, as you've seen on Twitter, but uh, this is what we're doing today. So we've built a platform to do tissue engineering at scale because again, the equipment to do what we need to do at scale has never existed. So again, we've had to rethink what tissue engineering is from, 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 kind of from first principles. Now, of course, we're working in an unregulated space uh, in the leather industry. So again, we don't have USDA oversight. We don't have FDA oversight. Um, so again, when we are designing the platform, um, we just have to have the basics of what cell culture needs to, to, uh, to thrive. We've grown hides, as you see in the middle. Um, so these are some of the hides that we um, harvested this summer. Um, and then we've as well tanned and finished them and made into products, um, actually wearing one of our watch straps here uh, on a daily basis as a well i say as a durability test i just like how it looks and and, and how it feels but uh, and it's a, it's a great product so again this is not just a, um, you know, a hypothetical process it, it, it's working in our hands so if you look at the what a traditional process um, is um, from a tanning perspective so again and kind of from a sourcing perspective so animals are raised for two to three years we then um, slaughter them we bleed them they're skinned. Uh, it's a pretty medieval process, if you ask me. Um, hides are then trimmed and sorted. This uh, then, as I mentioned, around the supply chain, they get shipped all over the world um, for finishing. Then they get usually shipped back to the Europe or uh, or kind of other countries that or other places where where, where they're kind of where there's high end tanning. Um, they're then uh, salted, pre tanned. Uh, they're then tanned and specifically kind of two brands specifications because again leather is a very versatile material it can become I mean a car seat a soft leather glove a structured handbag um, watch straps whatever and you kind know, of the applications are so manifold and then it's finished um, and uh, and and made into and made into products now our process is a little bit simpler it's a one-time biopsy from a healthy animal we then expand the cells in bioreactor systems, not uh, not unlike the systems that were talked about earlier, and uh, and there are definitely some interesting conversations that I would love to have um, uh, that come out from the from the companies that were that were presenting earlier. Um, so again, ex scaling the um, scaling the expansion process of of cells. We then seed them uh, onto proprietary scaffolds that we've developed and are still working on. And, uh, and again, uh, some interesting companies that, uh, that I look forward to have conversations with. We then uh, place these hides into our bioreactor system. And uh, in an automated fashion, we then allow them to grow into the full thickness that is required um, before we then harvest. And the rest of the process is very similar to what you see in a, in a regular kind of, in a regular tanning process. Now, the good thing is our process uses 90% fewer chemicals. Um, and instead of uh, a tanning process taking uh, seven days, our process takes around three days. So, but what brands are really interested in and uh, what the industry is looking for is not an alternative that um, kind of where you get a finished material. Um, the true change in the industry is when you just replace the supply chain. So kind of where do the hide co hides come from? And this is, this is what we're working on. Um, they can still tan them, they can still finish them, they can still kind of create the products that they know and love and their customers know and love because as I mentioned, I mean, it's a, it's a $414 billion industry. So it was a few years ago and expected to grow to, um, to 600 plus billion uh, in a few years time. So again, the industry or the market really loves these products. 
So then kind of what are we focused on today? So like the rest of the industry, of course, we're focused on cost. Um, we are, as mentioned, we don't have an FDA or a USDA um, approval process for the ingredients that we're using in our products. So again, we can be a little bit more flexible where we um, source the, uh, where we source the growth factors from. Um, we have uh, some great conversations going with, uh, with the industry already. Um, there's some very interesting things happening in that space and again, people that were speaking earlier and uh, doing fantastic things and uh, and we look forward to um, you know deep in our working relationship with companies in the in um, in, in in 21 um, of course growth factors are a big part of the cost um, structures um, but then of course um, our target market is the luxury industry so we have already partners in that industry we have uh, we have um, um, I'm thinking what I can, what I can and can't say, but again, the uh, the industry is less um, cost sensitive. So again, even at a relatively high cost, we still have a market uh, for our product, and that's something that uh, that is very exciting for you know, this alternative use of of cellular agriculture. Then, when you think about kind of how do we do this at scale, um, we have really had to rethink about. You know, I mean, you can't buy industrial sized bio uh, tissue engineering systems um, in the market. So again, we've had to design this from the ground up. Um, this is kind of our version zero of what we have developed. Um, and then uh, we have uh, the next phase of, of those, uh, of those uh, systems already in, in the works, both, um, both in our labs and, and developing and designing the next phase of it. Then uh, again, the quality aspect of it, um, we've reached a quality that is, um, that is, uh, close to what what the industry is uh, looking for and uh, well um, and close enough cl close enough for us to have uh, customers in the space um, and then of course there's still some uh, some optimizing to do and uh, and uh, some kind of tweaks around the tanning process optimizing the tanning process to really kind of bring out the beauty and the uh, and the and the versatility of our of our hides so when you look at what the future is looking, I mean, what the future holds for us and not just in the leather space, but again, in the, in the entire industry, um, we all, we're all working towards the same goal here. Um, we're working towards the goal of uh, removing animals from the supply chain. We uh, believe that there is a better way to do things. Um, we believe that not only Will it help the food systems and the material systems um, kind of in resilience to, of course, we've seen with, with what happened with COVID, um, but as well, I think uh, there's a huge opportunity. And again, why Singapore is interested, and I know that, I mean, um, the UAE and other countries that, uh, that are you know, thinking about food security, um, a big part of it for them is how can we produce things locally again? Do we need to be shipping products in uh, whether it's food from you know, one place in the world across oceans um, and then uh, you know, consuming it in, in another place? Um, for us, it's very much kind of, we want to be able to grow the hides where the hides are being used, uh, both in the tanning process and then in the finishing process and in the making of product. So again, there's a huge opportunity for localized production that can cut down on um, greenhouse gas emissions that happen through shipping, uh, on-demand manufacturing. Um, it's easier to plan out a manufacturing process when you can dial up and dial down the, uh, the volumes that you're producing with a few weeks notice rather than having to think years in advance because of course, I mean, a cow-based system takes two to three years to grow for, to, to, to full size. So again, you can't dial these things up and down as, as you would uh, with an on-demand um, production system. So leather for us is the first, calf leathers are the first um, product. We already have uh, crocodile cells and ostrich cells and kind of other exotic cell lines that we're working on. Um, and then again, how can we then, how can we use our knowledge to bring it back into regenerative medicine down the line. I mean, as, as, as others touch on, you know, how can we use this knowledge that is being, and the money that is being put into development of these systems to really 
benefit multiple other industries. And that's kind of what gets us really excited. Um, we've seen that investors are excited about this. And, uh, and again, how can we transform our materials, our food systems, um, and make a better future for us all? Thank you so much.